Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches shall be put upon his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire has consumed with the burnt offering on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar and he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and it shall burn them thereon the fat of the peace offerings the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar it shall never go out may the lord bless the reading and the study of his word uh, with us even this moment again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We began <coughs> to do a bit of the study of this passage in the morning when God said this is the law of burnt offering. It is the burnt offering not because it's a slogan but because the fire shall be burning in it from night unto the morning and from the morning unto the night it shall never go out now but this evening we're going to push a little further on the burning the fire that must not be put out before I will be talking about how to sustain it the processes that the Holy Spirit has outlined in this passage or how to maintain the fire I want us to speak about the fire itself the fire that must be burning the fire that must not go out each time we talk about the fire there are several concepts in the mind of everyone and several people already have an idea of what that fire is all about but this evening I want to spend this evening to look at the fire that must be burning. The fire that must be burning in our offering. Maybe before I go on to analyze the fire, I'll tell you uh, a little story from the life of Abraham 
You know, when God confronted Abraham in, in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, and God said to him, I am your exceeding and great reward. And Abraham said, How will I know that all the promises that you are speaking to me will come to pass? And he brought certain offerings and sacrifices that were supposed to be the burnt offering. And he already prepared them. I will not be talking about how to prepare it. I'll be dealing with that as the Lord will guide us tomorrow. But I remember that in Genesis 15, when he took all the various animals, let's read it. Genesis 15, I'll read from verse verse 8 after the Lord made a promise and he said how will I know the Lord said to him take me an ephah of three years and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon and he took unto him all this and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another but the birds divided it not and when the fowls came down upon the carcasses Abraham drove them away and when the sun was going down a deep sleep fell upon Abraham and lo, an aura of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for hundred years. And also the nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and thou shalt be buried in good old age now when that has been done in verse 17 and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces praise the Lord now you'll be wondering why I was needing to read that as I wanted to talk about the fire that must be burning in this offering that I'm laying on the altar let me say very quickly the burnt offering if there is no fire if there is no fire to be burning in it if you kill an animal here and you put it here and there's no fire to roast it can anybody come near this altar by tomorrow eh what will have happened the terrible smell the rotting that will take place and the all kind of flies that will fill the whole of this sanctuary it will drive all of us away an offering that is not roasted an offering that is not on fire an offering that is not being burned can never release a sweet aroma it will only produce a stinking smell and it can only become rotten 
and it can only attract dangerous flies and all kind of devourers. That's why we're going to be looking at fire. And the first thing that I want to be speaking about, when you lay your life down at the altar, when you say, Lord, here am I, take my life. When you are ready to let it go completely, there is something more that must come upon that offering before it can become useful. What is that? Fire. There are several things that fire must do. And that's what we need to discuss, particularly this afternoon, as the Lord will permit us. Because Leviticus chapter 6 says, And the fire must be burning in it night unto the morning, morning unto the night night unto the morning that is the burning must continue it must never stop actually said and the fire shall never go out what was the essence of that fire what is the fire for there are a few things that we need to discuss about that fire but the first paramount fire that we want to deal with the consuming fire the fire that purifies the offering the fire that burns off every dross every every root of decay everything that will not allow this life to release a sweet smell to God fire has to come on it so the first ministry of the fire that must be burning is a fire that purifies that dehydrates and roasts roasts the offering so as to deliver it from decay so as to deliver it from the devourer that fire is the first fire that we must not allow to quench upon our altar the fire that purifies the fire that roasts the fire that makes our lives to become a sweet savour in the hand of God. That's the first dimension of fire. And what does that imply for me and for you? We're going to pick some few scriptures for God to help us as we look at the fire that must never never quench hallelujah hallelujah when you turn your bible and i want you to please come with me as we turn our bibles tonight i want you to come very quickly and the book of luke the book of Luke, chapter 11. My Bible now, Luke, chapter 11. Luke 11, and verse 33. We shall start reading from Luke 11. Are you there? Luke 11, and verse 33. No man, when he has lighted a candle put it in a secret place neither under a bushel 
but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light your eye is the lamp of the body when your eye is uh, <laughs> you know I'm an old King James reader the light of the body is the eye therefore when your eye is single thy whole body also is full of light but when your eye is evil thy body also is full of darkness take it therefore that the light which is in you be not darkness if your whole body therefore be full of light having no part dark the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle does give you light praise the lord praise the lord now i want you to mark that passage because we are going to be coming on it very very deliberately because it's very critical for our study this time again praise the lord now when we offer a life to god as an offering that offering itself unless it is set on fire unless there is an internal working of the fire that releases the life from every impurity from everything that could cause our offering to be to be wasted the natural offer will not satisfy the taste and what God needed to use it for until he has placed it under his fire every sacrifice the Bible said must be salted with fire there are two things <laughs> that must always come upon every sacrifice salt must be put on it and then fire must be put on it when you have just slaughtered an animal and you want to preserve it from decay two things you do quickly you put salt so that all the agents of decay like maggot like other bacteria they will not have access to work on it as to destroy it but salt will not release the aroma of the offering until it has been placed on fire the fire that preserves the offering from every decay is also the fire that releases the aroma of it that's the first issue every time a life is brought before God for God to do something with it if it is raw if it is unroasted before long that offering will decay it will be rotting and it will be useless so when Abraham brought his offering and he has cut it into two and he has arranged it on the altar until fire came do you know the two things he was struggling with he was struggling with vulture that were coming to pick it he was struggling with flies that were coming to contaminate it he was driving them away driving them away but i tell you ordinary and fun cannot drive away agents of decay 
What will drive away all the agents of decay? Fire. Once fire comes, even all the birds that wanted to come and pick, they will first run away for their lives. Because fire is at work upon that offering. Brothers and sisters, the first dimension of fire that must be burning in each one of us is the fire that purifies our life for God. The fire that takes away the secret agents of decay, the secret outworking of disintegration, the secret sinful habits that no matter how energetic a man appears, if there is that little room for sin, whatever little habit of sin it is, and you allow it and fire has not roasted it dry what will happen is that before you know it what looks big will begin to collapse little 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 worms will begin to eat inside they don't usually start on the outside. On the outside, they are still looking nice because the skin is very hard. But when you go there and you just put your finger, you punch out the thing, just enter. Then you discover that a lot of rottenness has already taken place inside. What is the reason? When an animal is slaughtered unless you open it up and release everything inside that can cause it to rot inside you cannot preserve it so when God said and the fire must be burning in it the first understanding that comes to my heart is that the fire that keeps my life ever roasted that keep my heart ever purified, that keeps me ever dehydrated from every column of sin, from every agent of decay, must be bony. But the Bible says it must be bony in it. I took note of the word of God, he said, and the fire must be bony in it. It must be an internal fire. Not just an external fire. You know, sometimes you may put fire on top of an animal. And the outside will look as if it is well roasted. And you say, ah, this thing is well roasted, well roasted. Those of us that are experienced, you know that it has not been roasted yet. What do you do? you puncture it you inside it you open the inside and then you expose the inside onto the fire it is when the fire is burning in that you can get correct roasting and that's when the correct aroma begins to come out some of you, you have gone to buy what they call bush meat some of our sisters here i know you know when you go to buy bush meat or what you call roasted fish how many of you have had the bad experience of buying a roasted fish on the outside everything look brown well roasted only for you to get home and you now want to cook the meat or the fish and then you suddenly discovered that some maggots were just coming out have you had such experiences before aha what was the problem the fire burnt on the outside 
the fire was not burning inside the fire was burning outside it was not burning in it leviticus said and the, the, it is a it is it is it is a burnt offering because it is burning and that the burning was burning in it i want you to note that the word in other recent version who does not understand may use the word on but it's not on it must be in in the offering so the first thing i want to talk about this night is the internal fire that must be burning in your heart burning within you to extract to take away every inherent impurity every agent of decay every secret addiction to sin everything that people may not see on the outside but has capacity to get your inner man rotting to get your inner man you know destroyed the fire the fire that purifies the fire that rose the man dry must be burning in it and must be burning from the night unto the morning from morning unto the night from the night unto the morning when i move a little further i will be explaining to you why the holy spirit particularly emphasize that the fire must be burning in it from the night unto the morning from the night unto the morning i'll be explaining that as quickly as i can by the grace of god but let's first note that for your offering for you to be a minister whose ministry is bringing a sweet aroma to god the fire first is not yet fire for ministry it's not first fire for preaching it is fire for personal purification fire for personal personal roasting of your inner life that is the fire that must never go out if you become a big preacher you have become so popular and everybody is inviting you here and there and you became careless with that fire that is roasting your life inside that is keeping your life purified that is taking away and confronting every little 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 foxes that have been sent and injected to destroy the vine if you allow that fire to die out i must tell you the truth not too long from now you become an hypocrite your outside will look roasted like that fish sometime when we have brought that fish or that bush meat home and we thought that we have got something good when you now puncture it and you now discover raw raw unroasted meat can you tell me quickly what immediately reaches your nostrils tell me terrible smell terrible smell i don't know whether you have ever gone to a restaurant and you ordered for bush meat or you ordered for a uh, dry fish or whatever and they brought it even though they garnish it very well even though they did all the decoration on the plate when you now start to eat the bush meat you begin to taste 
a kind of taste in between I don't know how to put it how many of you have eaten rotten meat before please let me see your hand up you can, thank you uh, you know the taste there's a smell of rottenness as if you are eating something dead but on one side because the outside look well roasted there's a little sweetness that is going with some level of rotting bitterness ah! if you close your eyes and you eat it maybe in another two hours you will start running to the toilet because you have taken something garnished but it's a poison my dear brother my dear sister those of you that desire to serve God in the ministry the fire that continues to roast your inner man the fire that continues to confront little little foxes dead flies things that destroy the and the the inside consecration of a man's life if that fire is not constantly burning inside of you you are likely to have a physical appearance that looks good a physical presentation that appears nice but an inner man that is rotting an inner man that is decaying on the outside you are a great man of god but on the inside you are getting rotting on the outside you can speak powerfully but inside there is something else that people must not bite even though you try to use perfume to make everything look nice on the outside something is releasing a putrefying smell a bad smell but from inside so people are wondering but we like the way this man preaches but we don't know where this thing is coming I tell you I know where it is coming from excuse me where is it coming from the unroasted inside tell somebody the unroasted inside will spoil the beauty of your ministry let me tell somebody because I'm too far away from you I will have come to touch you and say brother your outside may look nice but if your inside is not roasted if your inside is not burning with a fire that purifies with a fire that takes away the dross that unroasted inside will spoil your beautiful appearance so when God said and the fire must be burning in it my first concern the fire that consumes every every impurity the fire that dehydrates and takes away every column that carries bacteria that carries instrument of decay that fire must be burning that's the first fire that I must present to you tonight when Jesus Christ was speaking about this I read Luke 11 if we go back thank you the brothers they have had my cry thank you very much would you like to follow me back to the scripture again go with me to mark i want you to follow me quickly to mark mark chapter 9 mark chapter 9 right Rapita you can carry your Bible now I have light 
to read my own Bible. Thank you. Never preach from a borrowed Bible, you know. It never works. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 9. If you get to Mark chapter 9, I want you to follow very quickly to verse 49 and verse 50. For everyone shall be salted with what? With fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. You know, whenever you read that scripture, you'll be wondering, why did Jesus end that chapter that particular way? And more and more, I just realize that each time God speaks, He speaks in various dimensions of what we must pay attention to. The first thing I saw him saying, everyone shall be salted with fire and every sacrifice must be salted with salt. You know, those two instruments, salt and fire, they are first, the instruments that God uses all the time to preserve every life that comes to him. To take away all the inherent things that want to destroy a man's life and ministry. And so this night, the first dimension of fire that each one of us must have, each one, everyone must be salted with this fire. And every sacrifice must be salted with this salt. Is that fire that takes away every inherent issue of sin. A ministry can grow to any extent. But when the minister begins to have internal decay, internal disintegration, internal rottenness, the ministry can only last for a little while. Very soon, whatever anointing was on that man's life will be contaminated. Very soon, he can only be speaking about empty words. There will be no more life to push the hammer of the word of God. There will be no more fire to kindle others because he himself there's a fire extinguisher in his own heart and so when the word of God said and the fire must be burning in it must be burning in it must be burning in it and I said Lord so the first dimension of that fire there are four dimensions of fire we shall discuss. But we are not going to discuss all of that here tonight. As I go on tomorrow, you will be seeing the other fires. There will be the fire of utterance in the word of God. The people said, why we heard him preach? Our heart did what? Bond within us the fire on the tongue of a man of God we are going to talk about that we are going to talk about the fire that consumes a man and keeps him ever zealous we are going to talk about that 
But tonight, within the short space of time that God is allowing me to have, the first fire, the fire that purifies, the fire that kills you internally roasted, internally free from every disintegration, internally free from secret sin and secret addiction. When they describe the life of John the Baptist, they said the John the Baptist was a burning and a shining light. That is, John the Baptist himself, he was a man that is burning. The entire life of John was burning. But unless you are burning, you cannot be shining. But permit me just to ask very quick questions that we need to pray about tonight before we draw the meeting to a conclusion. When Abraham had slaughtered the animals and fire had not come there, did you see what he was struggling with? Can you remember what he was struggling with? What was he struggling with? Vultures. Vultures. And I don't know. You know, I have been a butcher. And I always wonder if we kill a cow now until we carry that all the entries all the different different parts until we put it on fire there are two things we continuously fight against i don't know where they normally know that we are killing a cow you will see all these birds this vulture i don't know who normally tells them that they have killed a cow in that compound go and take your own quickly I don't know who normally tells those. I think they have an instinct. They have a powerful sense of smell that once a fresh animal is put down, whether it's the blood that invites them, I don't know. But I have always seen that when we are still butchering the cow, you will see all these birds, they will begin to land. I wonder where they always are. And they are coming, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. And if you don't walk fast, while you are cutting your meat, they have picked one. Another one will pick one. Another one will pick one. So what do we normally do to drive them away? As butchers in our time. We will set up fire here and there. So as the fire is releasing the smoke, we will quickly cut maybe one of the skin of the, of the meat and put it on the fire. So the, the smell will begin to go. And once the smell is going, those vultures, they are also running away. That's the only way. The second thing that we fight, flies. Flies. Again, I kept wondering, who tells flies that their customer is somewhere here? Do you know that as we are sitting here, this is a very beautiful sanctuary and I thank God. I have not seen one fly yet. But can I tell you, if somebody is here with a wound on his leg, Dr. Apele, if somebody has an open wound that is not yet dressed and not properly bandaged and illicit, what happens, sir? Let the doctor talk. Please come, sir. Maggots will gather, flies will also, also perch upon, upon the wound, and they will come. 
uninvited 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 maggots will come and flies uninvited they will just come and you know what used to touch me sir is that when the flies are flying in they go straight to where the wound is we are all here flies will be flying they will not fall on you because you don't have open wound they will just be going straight to that man that has an undressed wound even when you are doing flies go away, go away they say no we have a customer here we have someone here who is carrying a wound and we need to perch on it my friend let me ask you two questions you wonder why sin is always pursuing you you wonder why anywhere you went immorality always surround your life could it not be that you have an open wound that you have not allowed the fire to deal with could it be that even though you are trying to offer your life to God this life has not been roasted the fire that purifies that closes the wound has not been allowed to operate we may sit in a good meeting like this but you have an untreated wound and unroasted inside we may sing we may clap hands we may appear to be nice we may dress well but the flies knows their customers and they are always moving around them like that and you say but what is smelling here what is making flies to come here and the flies are so stubborn and the vultures are very stubborn and i hear them say we have a customer here we have an unclosed wound here we have a place here where where we need to feast if you don't want us here you either send our customer to us or you close the place as long as we are smelling it we must come here this night God said and as the fire must be burning in it I saw that the first need is that the man that want to offer himself as a living sacrifice to God as a burnt offering is the first man that the fire must roast is the woman that the fire must roast you will not be of great use to God if we leave your inside unroasted you will not have any enduring impact in the purpose of God if there is an aspect of your life that you have not exposed to the fire of the Holy Spirit. So when you read that scripture, let's read it again. And now going back to my Leviticus passage, Leviticus chapter 6. Now, please, when you get there, Leviticus 6, you will now look at verse 9 and verse 10. 
actually I want to look at that verse 9 and particularly verse 12 I'm jumping it because there are other issues we'll come back on them tomorrow it is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it the fire of the altar shall be burning in the burnt offering verse 12 and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and it shall burn thereon even the fat of the peace offering what's the meaning of this say it shall lay the the the, the burnt offering in order upon it it was when Elijah was trying to bring down the fire on the month you remember the month of Camel when he has pieces the animal he laid it in order so that every aspect must be exposed to the fire every aspect every segment of the offering has to be laid in order you don't just pile it up every aspect must be exposed so that each one will get fire and you must be there regularly to turn it so that one side was not overburnt and the other side remained unroasted why is the Holy Spirit insisting that he must arrange the burnt offering in order so that the fire can be burning in it? It is because even if several parts of our lives had been well roasted, but there is one aspect that remains raw what will that little aspect that remain raw what will it do to the rest it will spoil it because a little leaven what does it do it leavens the whole lump a little leaven that little aspect say well i thank god for everything it's only this aspect of my life sorry sir this sacrifice must be holy it must be completely exposed it must be roasted so that no segment of it is still carrying rawness raw things are not very useful raw things they easily invite decay and destruction raw things will always bring those bacteria that will not allow the glory and the aroma to come out this night is there any aspect of your inner life that is not yet exposed to this fire is there any segment no matter how little of your secret life that is not being burnt being roasted being exposed to the fire is there any part any habit yes you are a powerful preacher but the area of your emotion has not been laid on this altar for fire Your affection has not been nailed to the cross. You are a great man in terms of zeal. But when it comes to greed, that has not been put on the fire on the altar. If 
even though we would have loved to use your zeal, but your greed has overwhelmingly destroyed whatever God can do with your life. And the fire must be burning in it. Now, why did they say, and the fire must be burning in it from night unto the morning? Brothers and sisters, I also again don't know how everything works. But I know, I know that all the rodents, all the cockroaches, all the things that destroys, they are at their best when in the night. It looks to me as if all the things that destroys a man's life, all the things that contaminate a man's inner life and anointing, they don't happen most of the time in the daytime. They are at their best in the night. They are at their best in the absence of light. They are at their best in the dark. So when God said, let it be burning in it from the night until morning, it touches my heart that if my life is going to be useful by, to God, where the fire needs to start burning properly, must be in the dark areas of my life. Areas that nobody can easily see. Maybe in the daytime, the sun may be helping a little. But in the night, you know there is no sun. There is no heat you generate again. If there is no fire inside, nothing can help. I grew where there was no freezer, there was no light, nothing. And yet, we are butchers, we normally sell meat. And I know the trouble. <laughs> when your meat has not been sold from morning to after evening, it looks as if decay accelerates once the evening comes suddenly your meat will start turning green all those greenish things you see on top of the meat they are the bacteria that have come to finish it but somehow in the daytime when we put it in the sun it will look as if there is no problem because the sun is helping at least to deal with some of those things. But when God said, in the night, I have a clear picture that yes, majority of people that fell, majority of people that made a shipwreck of their call, it's always in the night. When Judas Iscariot was going to betray the Lord, when did he do it? It was in the night. He was waiting for the night and that evening as they were having the final Lord's Supper the Bible says Satan entered into Judas and he went out and the Bible reported it was night when brother Peter was going to deny Jesus and was going to say I never knew him when did he do it Talk to me. It was in the night. Actually, before the cock crows two times, he had denied the Lord three times. Nights are always dangerous. Nights are always nights of serious temptations. 
And so if the fire needs to be burning upon my altar, it must be burning particularly in the night. It should burn in the morning, it should burn in the afternoon. But it is much more peculiar and necessary that this burning must be burning in the night. In the absence of the multitude, when nobody is around, when all eyes are closed, when all others have gone away, what happens in the night? Said the fire must be burning in it. Can I find out as we stop to pray together? What happens in the absence of the multitude? What happens to you when all else are gone? What happens when there's no more light? When people no longer see what to do? When you are alone? When darkness seems to have covered everywhere? Are you still burning? Are you still burning? The final thing I must point out before we go to God in prayer. The book of Malachi. Please follow me to read Malachi. I'm talking about the fire that must be burning. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. When you get to Malachi chapter 3, please read with me verse 2 and verse 3. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's what? Fire. And like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old. And as in the former years, the fire that refines, the fire that purifies, say, and it will sit like a refiner and a purifier, and it will apply fire that melts, that di that dissolves all those things imperceptible corruption things that water cannot remove things that when we shake it doesn't fall out fire will bring them to their melting points so that the beauty that God is looking for in this offering might come out he said so that the offerings of the children of Levi and I'm talking about you and me men and women that have offered their lives for ministry fire must be burning in it so that all impurities all imperceptible corruption all instruments and agents of decay might fall out so that your offering might be pleasant before the Lord so that your service it be acceptable before God. This night, it is time to come back again, to call upon the name of the Lord. How do I sustain that fire that will be burning inside of me? Fire that keeps me always purified. The fire that keeps me always in shape. The fire that will not allow little, little dead flies 
and the vultures to come and contaminate what God wants to do with my life. The fire that keeps me roasted, 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 that removes rawness. The fire that God must apply day and night, night and day, to keep my life ever releasing an aroma that satisfies the heart of God. How do I have that? Of course, you'll be asking me later on, is that fire the word of God? Yes. Is that fire has something to do with the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost fire? Yes. Is that fire has to deal with a zeal that consumes a man? And reset his focus in life. Yes, we'll be talking about that. But for tonight, tonight, while we all in the morning said, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Here is the lamp for the offering. God said, yes, put fire there. Open it up and let's expose everything to the fire of the word of God. And so this night, we're going to stand in prayer again. But the prayer tonight is a very, very meticulous prayer. My dear brothers, my sister, this is not a time to do general things. It's a time to open it and say, Lord, this aspect of my life, I can see it rotting. Father, apply your fire. This segment, I have kept it intact, but it is still raw. It is still raw. And it is breeding, breeding bacteria. It's breeding worms that will destroy every other thing I am gathering. Somebody may need to really pray and say, God, my outside appear roasted. I'm appearing good on the outside. But I know that there's something inside that if somebody mistakenly puncture it, things that will come out will be an embarrassment. Father, tonight, set me on fire. The fire that purifies. The fire that roots a man out of rawness. That fire must be burning. The last thing I must say, so that you can pray well. Some say, I thank God. I used to be on that fire. But you know the trouble is this. Once the fire goes down, when the meat is not fully roasted, the unroasted part decays faster and spoils the rest. As I'm hearing God saying, when will I graduate from this burning that keeps my life ever roasted? Never will I graduate. Maybe you have been with the Lord in 20 years and you are beginning now to indulge yourself. The things you said you will not do 20 years ago, now that you are becoming a big man, they are beginning to come back into your life. If you ask me, what do I need? You need fresh fire. Maybe some habits of life that God gave you victory over some years ago. Unfortunately, they have started creeping back into your life. They have started coming in like little, little termites. If you ask me, brother, what do I need? I will say you need fresh fire. Perhaps 
the things that was not a challenge to you before things that never attracted your attention things that you never cared about maybe now they are coming they are streaming around you and they are beginning to stick to your life like a tick and you are saying I don't even know why this thing is happening to me after I have been serving God for 20 years brother the fact that those things are beginning to stream back is that they have discovered certain areas on roasted and the only answer to it is fire and the fire must be burning in it from the night until the morning and morning until the night and night until the morning the fire shall not go out the fire of personal consecration the fire of personal holiness the fire that makes us to walk in victory day by day from sin must keep burning there is no time we can graduate from it and so tonight God who himself is longing that he will have men and women here who become aroma of his glory aroma of his victory vessels that he will use to bring about the glory of God he stand here and say yes bring every aspect arrange it in order so that my fire can fall upon it don't pray general prayer pray particular prayer tonight pray personal prayer tonight pray pointed prayer tonight and say God maybe this aspect of my life has been roasted but I can see I can see a weak point here I can see a raw point here a rawness and I can see strange things trying to enter father set fire on it set fire on it and maybe somebody is sitting here tonight your fire has quenched and you are just managing with ordinary smoke I thank God for Jesus he will not quench a smoking flax he will rather blow it until it becomes a flame again are you burning low Jesus is going to fire you up again but that fire first is a fire for personal purification personal consecration personal internal roasting internal victory all those who have neglected it they have rotten out of the ministry they may be mighty preachers they may be bishops but when you go near them they are smelling bad when you go into their house, to their family, something has scattered. What do they need? Fresh fire. Fresh fire. There was one stanza of a song that we used to sing, Give us, O Lord, thine unction. Anoint us for your work. Arise, O Lord, and set us in motion. The second stanza said, Baptize me, Lord with thy fire and set my soul ablaze to burn and to shine for your cause revive your zeal in me purge me O Lord and take away every impurity anything that can spoil this ointment of anointing set it on fire roast me dry O God we're going to rise in prayer and I'm going to ask you don't pray as if you are praying for someone else pray because something is at stake your inner man has to be roasted roasted dry that little aspect that you have left is capable of destroying the rest of your ministry you have had a good name but this thing will spoil it 
if you don't get fresh fire shall we go on God together and you are going to say Lord I don't know how others want to talk to you tonight but for me Lord set me on fire fresh fire that this with my inner man fresh fire that purifies me fresh fire that roasts me inside areas that are raw areas that are uncooked areas where strange bacteria and worms are beginning to feed tonight oh god don't let the vultures spoil this offering don't let the birds and the fowls of the air don't let them come and pluck this offering from your hand set me on fire set my life on fire can i hear you call on god can i hear you lift up your voice and say god set me ablaze oh god and the fire must be burning not just on it in it create a fire inside me not a fire around me not a fire on top a fire inside a fire that roasts me from inside a fire that sets me ablaze from inside father tonight set me on fire set me ablaze oh god for your glory oh don't let this offering be wasted don't let this offering be, be destroyed, oh God. Santo Robo Shiva. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Ribo Le robo shanta makanto robo skila. So robo shanta makanto robo shila. Imba katao ya makoto. Pass me no, o gentle Savior. Yeah. My humble cry, why on others thou art calling? Do not pass me by, Savior. Savior, save. Savior, Savior, yeah. My Father, why on others thou art Holy, do not pass me by, Savior.
is a fire of personal holiness. The fire that keeps your heart ever burning for God. That takes away every impurity. That does not allow impurity, impure thoughts, secret addictions, secret failures, secret sinfulness. If it is not dealt with, vulture will destroy this offering. Dead flies will spoil the ointment. It will be a waste. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We are going to pray together quickly. As our time has gone beyond, we just have these two minutes or three to cry to God. But this evening, I said you should not pray general prayer. I want you to pray particularly. Father, lose my life in this matter. This rawness that has not been dealt with set me on fire. I want to serve you, but something is decaying inside of me. Something is getting rotten inside. Set me on fire. Strange things are coming to my life. Strange things are entering, streaming in like flies. Set me on fire, oh God. Set my soul ablaze. Deliver me from this rawness. Holy Spirit, please walk, walk in this meeting tonight again. Holy Spirit, please, Lord, said every sacrifice will be sorted with fire. Sort me with fire tonight. Yes, you are a preacher. But immorality has not left your life. There's a bad smell that is coming out. Only fire can finish it. Will you come to God and say, Lord, set it on fire for me. Don't let me find myself. Wash away. Have mercy on me tonight. Holy Spirit, please have your way tonight. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Holy Spirit, touch my heart. Oh Lord. Touch my heart. Set me ablaze tonight, O oh Lord. Touch my heart, O oh Lord. Touch my heart, O oh Lord. Touch my heart. As we pray that prayer, you can know where some agents of decay where secret sin is about to spoil your offering they are about to spoil what God wanted to make of you the whole of your life is getting threatened now your beautiful marriage may collapse because termites are already eating the wood. Who is there here tonight? We say, Lord, I can no longer cover. Set me on fire. This night, I just want this offering to be on fire. I just want every part of it to be exposed to fire. 
where are you? If you will stand and stretch forth your hand and lift your right hand and say, Lord, I'm the one. Set me on fire. Don't permit me to go rotting. Don't allow this little dead fly to spoil the ointment of apothecary. Where are you? I want to call on God together with you tonight. If you are crying to God and say, Lord, for me, this meeting must mark that turning point. Areas that nobody has known about. I look roasted on the outside, but my inside is rotting in. How long will I cover up? Set me on fire. Every aspect must be on fire now, Lord. Roast me dry. Where are you? If you would like me to stand with you in prayer, can you just walk out here and say, Lord, I have decided to lay my life in your hand. Vulture must not destroy it. Termites of sin must not contaminate it. Dead flies. I didn't offer my life to be wasted. I did not come here just to be a useless non-entity. This night, oh God, expose every part of my heart. Things that people don't know about me. On the outside, they think I'm coping. But there's something hitting me deep inside. They call me an elder. But I'm beginning to lose my grip inside. Bring the fire, Lord. Bring the fire, Lord. For Abraham, they said there was a smoke from a furnace that went through all the, all the offerings. That was when vulture can no more come there. Pray to now and say, let fire rise from inside of me. Let fire rise from inside of my heart. Where are you? Where are you, my friend? If you are coming, just look quick. If the Holy Spirit said tonight is not a night to hide, it's not a time to cover up, it's a time to say, Oh God, let the fire rise from within me. Let it deal with every wrong thing. The consuming fire, let it consume every wrong thing. So that I can be roasted inside out. So that the aroma of your life may break forth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are still needing to come. Please come quickly before I pray. You need to make it to the altar tonight. Just come quickly and say, Lord, set my life on fire. Thank you, my brother. Sister, thank you. If you are coming, just do quick. This is not the time to hide anything. Don't say it's a little thing. It's a little level that let me the whole lot. Don't say it's a little thing. It's a little decay that's where the whole meets. A little rottenness will destroy everything else. This night say to God, Lord, look at me. I spread out my life, set fire. And this fire must not quench. This fire must be burning. The prayer you are praying tonight, say, God, what you will kindle in my heart from tonight? Money by money. Every night it must continue. Where there's nobody, the fire must burn. In the secret place, the fire must keep burning until I'm fully roasted for your glory. The fire that quenches sin. Release it, oh God. Is it in the area of your marriage? Is it in an aspect of your secret life? Tell God, set fire there. Set fire there. This meeting must be a revival fire for me. I can't go back the way I came. 
this weekend must turn me another man I must become a burning man for God Shaturi Alababa Masiara Katao Yama Mama Mama Release the anointing here tonight, oh God. After all, you are our God with a consuming fire. The fire that consumes. When, when Elijah prayed and you said fire, you consume the rock, you consume the water, you consume the dust. Father, send the fire that consumes every sin, every secret habit every addiction anything that is that is an agent that is putrefying this ointment tonight oh god set the fire on it send the fire lord send the fire lord in jesus name we are praying do you remember that the bible said let him arrange all the burnt offering on the altar so that each one can be exposed to fire not a lump not a pie if we pile it others will be rotting others will be overburnt it must be spread you will tell god tonight i'm spreading my life before you I'm exposing every part of it. Let fire burn every section. Every area. Tell God every area. Every area. Every area. No one must be concealed. No aspect must be covered. Not a part. I want everything exposed to you, Lord. Father, I'm praying. My attitude to money, put it on fire. The affection of my heart, put it on fire. Attitude to women, oh God, put it on fire. Leave no sight unexposed. The Bible talk about Ephraim. He said, Ephraim is a burnt cake. One side was burnt, the other side uncooked. Tell God, Lord, take my raw side, put it on fire. I spread my life before you this night. I want you to be meticulous with my life, oh God, from tonight. Holy Spirit, do it. Do it, oh God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Brothers and sisters, put your hand either on your head or on your heart as I call on God tonight. I know God has come. I know the Holy Spirit is walking from heart to heart. I perceive that for this work to move to the next level, the men that will move it are men that are on fire roasted from every sinfulness roasted from every decay that right inside them they are burning for righteousness they are burning in holiness right inside them there is no segment that the bacteria and worms are freely moving up and down every sacrifice is being sorted with fire here tonight every sacrifice is being sorted with salt here tonight oh god this night father take our lives set it on fire every secret thing that has remained raw uncooked unroasted for years let your fire come on it let your fire come on it from this night oh god those segments where the devil is seeming to have a hold he said where any other place can be can be roasted but leave this side for me 
Father, tonight set fire there. In the name of Jesus, set fire there. Every segment, every section of life, every area of our privacy, set fire there. In the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, if fire is not there, vulture will take it. If you didn't bring that smoking from the furnace, how do we fight bacteria? That's why we plead with you tonight. We have come to this altar. Set fire there in the name of Jesus. Every sin, particularly sins of the night, secret sins, the one that eyes of men have not seen. This night, Father, as we plead the blood of Jesus for cleansing, for forgiveness, we now are set fire there. Fire. Let fire come there. Everything that had been inside, covered up, punch it tonight, oh God. And set us on fire in the name of Jesus. Lord, there may be friends that we got connected with out of this rawness of life. There may be strange relationships that each time we meet, we fall back there. This night, Father, dry it up. Dry up that column, that column. Let it be completely dry and set it on fire. Set it on fire in the name of Jesus. Several of these, my brothers, are ministers of the Word of God, and yet there's a decay inside. They would like to be strong, but there's a weakening force. Tonight, oh God, because of your mercy, burn it out in the name of Jesus. And what I'm asking for tonight is not for an occasion that the burning shall become perpetual. The burning, the burning shall never go out. These brothers will never be quenched again. Their lives will never be quenched again. Sin will no longer quench your fire. Satan will not quench your fire. The flesh will not quench your fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. As they put their hands on their head or on their heart here tonight. Father, put your hand on their hands. Put your fire upon them. Cause them to hate sin from inside. Let it be burning not just outside but from inside. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Father. Lord, why are you doing this? Because there's an aroma that will overwhelm this generation. There's something that will ooze out of our lives that Satan does not want. That's why he's planting fire extinguisher everywhere. But this night, O oh God, by the word of the Lord and by the reason of your anointing, the aroma of these lives will remain unquenchable. Amen. They will rise in victory. Amen. They will become roasted, roasted for God. Roasted inside and roasted outside. Thank you, Father. Now, I want you to say one word of prayer to God. That from this night, O oh God, make me a bunny and a shining light for you. Ask God for that. Say, Lord, make me a bunny and a shining light for you. That from this night, O oh God, anything that cannot burn, will not have lodgment in my life again. 
anything that is contrary to the fire of your spirit the fire of your word from tonight oh God from tonight oh God extract and burn it off every chaff every chaff that makes my life weak and vague burn it off in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you for hearing this prayer in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed amen amen father as they rise they will rise to burn for you as they rise today they will rise to shine for your glory as they rise from this meeting from this night they rise to fall no more the fire that you have kindled now nothing will quench it when that brother saw the burning bush and the bush was burning and is not consumed there's a resilience that you are going to create in these brothers that will keep them ever burning such that for years to come they burn for God you will burn for righteousness your life itself will be a fire Anywhere you touch, anybody you touch, they shall be roasted also. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise. Please arise on your feet. And lift up those two hands. And you will now say, I put my hands in your hands, oh my God. I put my hands in your hands. Oh my God, I put my hand in your hands. Oh my God, I shall not fail, for Jesus never fails. One more time, I put my hand in your hands. Oh my God, I put my hand in your hands. Oh my God. In your hands, oh my God, I shall not fail, for Jesus never fails. Talk with our hands in your hands. The fire that you brought upon the life of Isaiah, that coal of fire that you put on his lips that purged him completely, he said, your iniquity has been purged. As they go from here, every iniquity of their lives is purged. In the name of Jesus, every sinking sand of your life is filled up. You will never sink again. In the name of Jesus Christ. That area that is looking rotty, from this night it will be roasted preserved for God thank you for hearing our prayer and if there be anything that the enemy had posted into your life sickness as the fire fall on you tonight the consuming fire will consume them those things you spent money upon month after month by the fire that is burning now it shall be burnt out in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I'm asking that you quicken their mortal bodies and release them to run for you thank you in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed amen amen thank you please get back to your seat and keep burning keep burning